Zero Accounting Software 2023 Projects Set Up. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the new company file get great guitars that we set up in a prior presentation duplicating some tabs like we do every time to put the financial statements in right click in the tab up top to duplicate right click in the tab up top again to duplicate back to the tab to the middle we want to go to the accounting drop down open up the balance sheet then i'm going to tab to the right accounting drop down again this time the income statement tabbing back to the middle drop down on the date custom date range we want to go for 2023 the end of it the 31st of december update that report going back to the tab to the right we got the correct date range here so that looks good let's go to the first tab we're now going to look at projects so note that if you don't have the projects on i already have the tab top for projects i believe you can go into the drop down here and there'll be projects and then there'll be a screen to just click it to turn on your projects and at that point you should have your projects tab on the right hand side and we can go into basically all projects and we haven't set up any projects yet at this point in time so i just want to give a little bit of background on the projects and basically what has happened in accounting software in general uh, before this and why it has basically happened because the projects are usually used for a specialized type of area usually when you have a job cost kind of system so i'm going to jump back on over here to the uh, quickbooks desktop flow chart just to look at the flow chart here because uh, the accounting flow will be basically the same in all the accounting systems including zero and we're basically looking at the revenue cycle which is represented in the customer cycle here remembering that when we're looking at the revenue cycle it will be dependent on not just our decision as to whether we want a cash based system or accrual based system but rather on the industry that we are in so if we're just getting paid by youtube we can wait till it clears the bank use bank feeds recorded as revenue at that time that's quite easy if we sell at a food truck or a restaurant or in a store with a cash register we're typically forced to uh, collect the payments and then we have this grouping issue that we have to deal with so that we can have that intermediary process of taking the money that we have received physical cash or credit card or whatever and put it in the bank in the same fashion as it will be shown on the bank statement to help us with the bank reconciliations and then if we actually do the work first such as a landscaping firm bookkeeping firm and so on we do the work then invoice the client then receive the payment and make the uh, deposit. So when we're talking about a project type system, if you have longer term projects, you have an added level of complexity with the revenue recognition oftentimes, because now you're in a system where say you're doing a construction project over multiple years, uh, then you're, you're gonna say, well, when should I be recognizing the revenue? Because I'm probably gonna be needing to be collecting money as the project is going on and usually revenue recognition happens at the point in time the work is done in other words normally when the work is done that's when we make the invoice and send it out to the client and that's when the revenue is recorded at the point in time we make the invoice or we do the work at the same point in time we collect the money such as a food truck or something and therefore when we create the receive money form that's when we record the revenue but if you're doing a long-term job then you're going to be collecting possibly cash but you haven't finished the job yet at that point in time so then the question is well sh since it's a long-term job should you be recording revenue as the job goes and there's different revenue recognition principles like completed contract 
or percentage of completion. And you also uh, want to be able to track by job. So in other words, we have particular customers, but we might have multiple jobs that we have for the particular customers. And we'd like to be able to run reports by the job reports. Now note, this is somewhat of a specialized uh, type of industry. So if you're a bookkeeper or something like that, then you wanna think, do you want to be taking on clients that have a job cost kind of system and it might be an area that you can specialize in. If you get quite good at that kind of system, then you have skills most likely that other people haven't developed and you can build your whole, uh, your whole bookkeeping system around a particular industry oftentimes. Now, when we look at these longer term jobs, oftentimes they have inventory, like a construction kind of job where you're dealing with you know, a lot of physical materials, but you can have a similar kind of system if it's a job cost system for a service-based company. So a classical setup for a law firm, a CPA firm, a bookkeeping firm is basically a job cost system because you're picking up particular jobs from the clients and then you can have a pool of, uh, of workers that are going to be assigning their time to particular jobs and you're billing out their time uh, to particular jobs. So that's kind of a job cost kind of system as well. Now, it used to be when the job cost system first came in play, they had what was called jobs oftentimes. So if you look at like the precursors to the online softwares like Xero, they had, they had actual jobs uh, and then they called them sub customers. So that would be in the contacts over here. If you looked at the actual contacts, they had sub customers. So you can have like a, a customer and then the sub customer and then you can run your reports by sub customer and so on and track your jobs that way now for the most part for the online softwares like zero they've put in this nice functionality of the projects so now the projects are housed in their own little space over here which is great but however note that they still kind of act like the jobs because the projects are typically going to be assigned to a particular customer so a lot of times when people see projects, they start to imagine different things they can do with it. They start to say, well, I can, I can then put, you know, a, a particular project I did for, for uh, an ad revenue campaign that I want to track the money that I received that was related to the ad revenue campaign or something like that. That's not really what the projects are designed for because you're going to have, you need to tie it to a particular customer. So it's really like an, an, an increase in the level up of the kind of job or sub customer functionality so that we can track a particular job data. If you want to track like categories of things, then you can use other tools, possibly like a, like a class tracking or, or other tools like that. And we might talk about that later, right? And in that case, a lot of times we might want to break out the income statement, you know, by, by different, by different categories, by assigning transactions to different categories and we can imagine a system where we can basically break out the the columns on the income statement uh by by category but the projects are typically going to be a, a tied to to a customer and therefore they kind of act like a an advanced jobs thing even though they have their own little field over here so if we go into the projects then we've got the drop down you've got the time entry staff and staff permissions, staff costs. We'll just give a quick little summary here and then we'll enter some mock projects. I'm gonna go into the all projects. So we've got the drafts, we've got in progress and closed, noting that when you're dealing uh, with projects and longer term types of jobs, these are classical categories of the jobs, right? You're, you're uh, starting, you haven't yet approved the job, and then the job is in progress when you're working on it. And then when you're done with the job, then you can mark the job as closed and that's gonna be a, a class, in, class tracking. We've got the timer, we've got the reports, and this is one of the cool things that you that's nice that you have your projects broken out separately because then you can look at your reports here within the project section, detail time, project detail, project time, and so on and so forth. And then in the new button, we've got uh, the new draft, or a new in progress. 
So if you're going to set up a new item that was a draft, you can put it in a draft. If it's going right in, the project has been accepted and you're starting to assign, you know, costs to it and whatnot, then we're going to go into a project. So I'm going to go into a new project. We have the contact. Notice you have to put a contact up top and these are generally going to be our customers. So I'm going to say Jones Guitars. We could have multiple, uh, multiple jobs for that customer. Now I'm just going to name the job or project a number 3005. Obviously in practice, you might want to be more detailed and say, you know, what you're doing for that particular project, but we're going to just give a generic uh, number of the project. And so we're going to say number in the project, uh, deadline. If you have a, an end date for the deadline, you could put that there, estimate, calculate from tax and estimated expenses. So if I select that, we, we have our uh, estimates. Notice that when you deal with the job, you're typically going to have to enter. Uh, oftentimes the process is you start with an estimate of how much the job is going to be because it's a long term job. You don't know exactly how much it will cost. And then you're going to actually do the job. And then you have some different setups that could be available in terms of whether or not you stick to the estimate or whether you update the estimate for what actually costs on the job. So uh, who can view this project? public, anyone with access, private admin, and so on. So I'm just going to create it like so. So now we've got our uh, job is set up. We're in Jones Guitar 3005. So notice how it's, it's formatted here. We're basically going to be billing in essence to Jones Guitars, but we got a specific job for a specific thing that we're doing for them. We've got our tasks up top. We've got our time. We've got our quotes and invoices. We've got our profitability, which is basically kind of like an income statement, uh, which is kind of what you can think of as being tracked here, like a, an income statement for that's being assigned to a particular job. We're gonna have income and expenses for a particular job. You've got your timer up top. Oh, hold on a sec, I'll close that. You've got your ad uh, task. Uh, estimated expense, expense form, and uh, expense from a bill. And then we have our invoices, uh, uh, deposits, and project amount. So we'll start assigning things out to it uh, in, and test it out in a future presentation. But if I just look at like, say, uh, an invoice, for example. So I'm going to say open draft invoice here. And then within the invoice, we have assigned to project down below. So if I go into the assigned to project, you got the assigned item to a project and then it's going to 3005. So you could say, okay, boom. And you could see up top, it's going to Jones Guitars, but it's, it's then you can assign it to the project with that there. So we'll, we'll talk more about assigning items to the projects in a future presentation, but you can see as you enter the data into the system when you assign them to the projects then you can basically track your information by project which will then show up if i go up on over here again and go into all projects uh in here and you can track basically the the info the, the estimate the invoicing the time and so on and then the profitability will basically be like a little income statement within the projects uh the profit the, is the invoice minus the costs. So as you're entering transactions related to a particular project, such as invoicing and uh, then expense forms, if I go up top and say we have a uh, spend money form, for example, I'm going to say it comes out of the checking account. I'm not, I'm not actually going to record it, but just to take a look at it, then we have the same option down here, assign expense to a customer uh, or project, right? So we could assign them down there, which we will do more in future presentations. Okay, so then I'm gonna go back into the projects. Now note that you also have reports that you might be able to generate by project. So let's go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate. And then, so you have the reports that you can generate within the projects, which are basically per project, right? A report for the information assigned to that particular project. And then you might wanna run a report that has all the projects on it. So you could say project, project, uh, you got the project detail, uh, project detail, project details, time and expense, project summary, project summary, and uh, the project financials, detail time, and so on. So you've got your project reports that you can generate within the reports area.
All right, so let's go back on over to the projects. Let's add one more. So I'm gonna go back into the uh, in progress. So I'm in the in progress. Here's our list of projects down below. We only have one, of course, at this point in time. So I'm gonna say new up top and I'm gonna say new in progress. And I'm gonna say this one's gonna be for, let's say Sam the guitar man, which is a customer we've already set up. So it has to be tied to a customer and I'm just gonna give it a name or number for the project. And that's all I'm gonna do. And we'll say create that one. And so there we have it. So if I go back to all projects up top, if I go back into all projects, we've got now our two projects in the in progress area. If I go to the tab to the right, we can edit it, we can duplicate it, we can delete it and so on up top. And we have uh, the draft up top in progress and change it to closed when we need to, which would be moving it between these three categories up top. And then if I go into Sam the Guitar Man, we've got the same kind of layout in here, the tasks, the time, the quotes and invoices, the profitability, and basically in the profitability, we have our you know income statement in essence for those line items that we are assigning to a particular project, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail in future presentations. But just note again, the projects in a job cost system is like a specialty area and we can have you know, easily have a whole course, multiple courses, you know, on uh, different kind of job cost systems. So uh, be, keep that in mind. Again, if you're a bookkeeper, one of the things you want to do is try to think, think about what, what area do you want to be specializing in? Do you want businesses that you can basically automate and try to do as, as easy as possible on a cash based system? Or do you want some uh, businesses that are going to clearly take more time because of more complexities such as tracking inventory in some ways and oftentimes uh, in a job you know longer term job cost kind of systems why would you want to do that because less people have those skills so those more specialized skills are, are more you know could be a mark a good marketable place to be so no impact on the income statement uh, or balance sheet, no changes at this point in time. So we don't need to pull up the trial balance. So we'll continue on next time.